which is the best Jurassic Park ride. You'll be the judge of that after today's video. We'll be exploring every one of them. From shows and exhibitions to the most impressive rides, we have them all. Will, our trusty narrator, will lead you through the history of Jurassic Park attractions. Fast Pass Facts! We'll cover past, present, and even newer created attractions inspired by the Jurassic Saga. Starting with 1990-1993, The Initial Inspiration. The history of Jurassic Park and Universal can be summed up in one sentence. Steven Spielberg is a visionary. He knew what Michael Crichton's novel was going to be before anyone else. So he, along with Universal, won a bidding war for the rights to the book before the book had even released. And not only that, but he also continued having such faith in the project that he convinced Universal to make a Jurassic Park ride for their park in 1990. That's the same year the book came out and three years before the movie was released. That's how much Spielberg trusted this franchise to be a success. And he was right. When the ride was being planned, the team in charge of creating it read the book and were even allowed to read the script for the movie in order to get inspired and come up with some great ideas for the ride. They were inspired by a scene in the novel where Alan Grant and Lex and Tim Murphy try to get back to the visitor center on an inflatable boat. And while this scene did not make the cut in the film, it was perfect for the ride. Universal reportedly put over a hundred million dollars into the attraction, making it the most expensive attraction ever created at that point and significantly more expensive than the film itself. 1996, Jurassic Park, The Ride. This all paid off because the attraction was a huge success as soon as it opened, on June 21st, 1996. The ride was fantastic, and the perfect way to immerse ourselves in the Jurassic Park world. It was designed to replicate the atmosphere of Isla Nublar, and it was perfectly achieved. The theming, music, and surroundings make this attraction fantastic. But the thing that really pulled you into the world were the animatronics. Everywhere you looked, there was dinosaur animatronics surrounding you. Some were feeding, some were chilling, and some were even submerged. The technology for all of this is very impressive if you think that the attraction was being developed in the early 90s. The attraction took so long to open because the team was waiting for technology to catch up with what they had in mind. Of course, the most impressive part of this attraction was the T-Rex animatronic at the end of the ride. Ahead of the boat, a waterfall parts, revealing a massive T-Rex that lurches forward, throws its head back, and roars, then lowers its huge jaws to within inches of your boat, just as it hits a nearly vertical 85-foot drop. This was the attraction that began it all, and it still holds up today. But Jurassic Park The Ride was closed in 2018 to be replaced by a new version, which we'll talk about briefly. 1999, Islands of Adventure. When Universal Studios Orlando opened in 1990, it was full of Universal franchises, but Jurassic Park was not one of them. As we saw earlier, the plans for this franchise to come to Universal and its park were still being developed during this time. Still, there were plans to bring the ride into the park after, but because the franchise was such a huge success, they knew they would have to take the original plans and make them bigger. So, how would they do it? Well, instead of just having one attraction, they would create a whole area themed after Jurassic Park. So in 1999, Islands of Adventure opened with six themed islands. One of them was Jurassic Park. This island was also themed as Isla Nublar and had several attractions. Of course, the main attraction would be similar to Jurassic Park The Ride, but this time it would be named Jurassic Park River Adventure. The main story and idea of the ride remained mostly the same, but there were some differences in scenery, track, and dinosaurs. The ride was a huge success, as it had been back on the West Coast. Also opening during this time was the Discovery Center. This is a real-life version of the Visitor Center from the film, where people can immerse themselves in the world of Jurassic Park. You can find dinosaur skeletons, interactive kiosks with dinosaur sounds, a Mr. DNA attraction where guests can create a human-dinosaur hybrid on screens. It also features a hatchery with animatronic dinosaur eggs and hatching events a game show style dinosaur knowledge challenge, and lifelike dinosaur animatronic figures. It's a great experience for any dinosaur fan. Another attraction that opened was Pterodon Flyers, a steel suspended roller coaster that takes us aboard a pterodon, flying over Camp Jurassic, which is another area that opened during this time. It is a prehistoric playground where guests can explore dark caves and amber mines, climb dinosaur capture nets, and navigate swaying suspension bridges. But the most impressive attraction for animatronic fans like our 
ourselves has to be the Triceratops Encounter. This attraction promised the possibility of having close encounters with dinosaurs, specifically with the Triceratops. This encounter was based on the one that Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler in Jurassic Park had, and in it you could find three life-size Triceratops, Topher, Chris, and Sarah. They were 30 feet long and almost 10 feet high, and could replicate breathing through synchronized ribcage movements, sneezing, and snorting, among other things. The encounter was amazing, even though people could not get as close to the animatronics as Universal had initially promised. Also, because of the complexity of the animatronics, they broke down often, and this caused the attraction to be regularly closed. It was closed down in 2003 and remained abandoned until 2011, when it reopened with the name Discovery Trail. This lasted a while because it closed again in 2012, this time for good. 2001 Universal Studios Japan and in March 2001, Universal Studios Japan opened. Over 11 million guests visited the park in its opening year, making it the fastest theme park to reach the 10 million guest milestone at the time. This park was the first Universal Studios theme park to open outside of the US. The park has a similar layout to Universal Studios Florida, and some attractions from Universal Studios Hollywood and Universal Studios Orlando, and it opened with several themed areas. One of these was, of course, Jurassic Park. This area is smaller than the one we can find in Universal Studios Orlando, but executives knew that a Jurassic Park attraction had to come to the park. This was a mixture of the ride in Hollywood and Orlando, because it is named Jurassic Park the Ride. But it is a mirrored version of the Islands of Adventure location. And, of course, it was another hit. The ride has remained there until now, but recently Universal Studios Japan announced that Jurassic Park The Ride will close on September 4th, 2023, for a major renovation, and is expected to reopen in early 2025. That's a long time to be closed for refurbishment, so we can only hope it will be an amazing refurbishment with lots of new things to see. Also, in 2001 in Japan, the first Jurassic Park-inspired exhibit opened, Jurassic Park Institute Tour. This exhibit toured in Japan and Korea and was fantastic. It was the perfect example of edutainment, because it was created to educate visitors about paleontology, archaeology, and contemporary dinosaur discoveries, but it used the Jurassic Park franchise to make it more entertaining for guests. The exhibit was conceived, designed, and produced by Thinkwell Design and Production, who created 20 full-sized animatronic dinosaurs using the original sculpted molds from Stan Winston Studios, interactive media, environmental sets, and and immersive special effects. It lasted about 60 minutes, in which guests walked through 12 different environments, ranging from a jungle to laboratories, and each of them contained a unique six-minute show, with live actors, a dozen life-sized animatronic dinosaurs, and special effects. They toured the complex, where they encountered the DNA labs, dinosaur veterinary compounds, and ultimately face-to-face -face encounters with raptors, a T-Rex, and pterodons. It was truly fantastic. 2010 to 2011, Universal Studios Singapore. After the success of their first overseas park, Universal wanted more, and they began looking into other locations. Singapore was their next venture, and construction of the theme park and the rest of the resort started on April 19, 2007. The park had a soft opening during the Chinese Year celebrations in 2010, but none of the rides were operational, and it officially opened to the public on May 28, 2011. This park had a total of 24 attractions, of which 18 are original, or specifically adapted for, and consists of six themed zones surrounding a lagoon. One of these zones is the Lost World. This area is divided into two sub-areas, Jurassic Park and Waterworld. The Waterworld area has the Waterworld, a live Sea War spectacular show, and the Jurassic Park area opened with several attractions. The main one is Jurassic Park, Rapids Adventure. This ride is similar to the ones found in the rest of the parks, but this time it is a river rafting edition. But this is not the only difference. In this ride, we are redirected to another area due to flooding, and we enter a restricted area where escaped velociraptors hiss at the raft. A Tyrannosaurus Rex is heard and seen in the distance and the raft enters a dark section with dinosaur proximity alarms sounding. The raft is lifted by an elevator where the T-Rex makes a menacing appearance, and then it plunges down a 40-foot slope into the water. It sounds amazing. The area also has Canopy Flyer, a mini coaster suspended on a track that holds two guests front-facing and two back-facing. The cars go up a high distance in the air and travel around the Jurassic Park area, including a 360-degree turn over the Jurassic Park Rapids Adventure, before returning to the station. The other ride is Dinosaurin, a fly-around ride that lets guests control the height of the pterodon they are aboard. 
2015, Raptor Encounter. When the Triceratops encounter closed in 2012, it left the park without any up-close interactive encounters with full-size dinosaurs. So Universal had to come up with something to fill its place. And that's how Raptor Encounters came to be. Raptor Encounters opened in May of 2015 in the area where the Triceratops encounter used to be. You can even see a skeleton of a Triceratops as an easter egg of this past attraction. This show allows people to interact with a Velociraptor. It features a raptor trainer introducing guests to a Velociraptor that are approaches a small area of its exhibit, with no fence cable, allowing guests to interact with it. The raptors are capable of doing several actions, such as aggressive actions like roaring, snapping, opening their mouths, looking to attempt to bite the guests, and calm actions like nodding and understanding, sniffing at guests when examining them, rubbing their heads or noses, or leaning on the guests to show affection, or even letting some people pet them when their mood is up for that. After this area opened in Orlando, it was recreated in Universal Studios Hollywood where it opened in July when Jurassic World was released. The main difference between these two encounters is that in the one in Hollywood, the raptors can interact with guests in an open area, while the raptors in the Orlando version interact with guests from inside their enclosure. There are several raptors that appear at this experience, and their appearances are random. So you might see Zulu or Lucy, who are brown raptors, or Tango, a green raptor. And in 2018, Blue made her debut in both parks. Also, in 2021, Bravo joined Blue at the experience. Those are the adult raptors. But in 2019, the cutest addition came to this experience. Baby Tango came to Universal Studios Hollywood. And because this was such a welcome addition, Islands of Adventure welcomed Baby Sierra in 2020. These encounters are cute and far less scary than seeing a full adult raptor. You can get up close and personal with these babies and even pet them. This was a way to bring guests who were scared to meet the other raptors, and it definitely worked. 2016, Universal Studios Japan and Jurassic World The Exhibition Let's go back to Universal Studios Japan, where in 2015, they confirmed that they would be adding a new Jurassic Park-themed attraction. This attraction is the Flying Dinosaur, which began construction that year and finally opened on March 18, 2016. This attraction is the second longest flying coaster in the world. It has two massive inversions and a 124-foot drop, one of the farthest initial drops ever. The story is that passengers are seized by a pterodon that has gone out of control. This beast throws passengers into the sky, making them soar above the ground for a total of three minutes. You get to swing 360 degrees through the world of Jurassic Park. It is actually said that this attraction was inspired by a cancelled flying coaster that would have been set in a huge aviary with lots of pterodons and pterodactyls. And that was not the only attraction that opened at the park this year. There was also the Panic Attack show, where guests could have close encounters with many dinosaurs. The show had an amazing Triceratops that was meeting guests until a group of raptors escaped and started surrounding the Triceratops and intimidating them. While all of this was happening, a huge Spinosaurus watched closely, growling and trying to escape his cage. Finally, after a few minutes of tension, one of the staff members shoots into the air in order to calm the beast down and bring everyone to safety. This show was, without a doubt, a great experience, but it was changed in 2017 to the Dinosaur Wonder Experience show, where they removed the Spinosaurus. It then suffered more changes and is now known as My Friend Dinosaur. This new version of the show is way more friendly. In this new encounter, we can see that there are no menacing dinosaurs, but they are all friendly with guests. We can also see a new Stegosaurus and a baby Triceratops. Also in 2016, one of the best Jurassic World shows was created, the Jurassic World Exhibition. This is one of the most astounding experiences to get up close with the dinosaur. This touring attraction was first housed at the Melbourne Museum on March 19, 2016 and has moved several times since then. Paleontologist Jack Horner, who was the paleontological consultant for the first four films, was consulted for the design of the dinosaurs and their film-inspired environments. This show takes us into Island Nublar, where we can get close to the dinosaurs and be a part of some iconic moments. You begin the experience by riding a ferry to the island and walking through the Jurassic World gates. Through the experience, you encounter a 7-meter tall Brachiosaurus and step behind the glass at the Hammond Creation Lab to engage with the real-world science surrounding dinosaur DNA. But the most impressive dinosaurs in this exhibition are the Indominus and the T-Rex. In the Indominus Rex enclosure, you can see the creature wake up and notice a piece of meat in its cage. 
Then, without further warning, snap. She detaches it with great force and eats it and proceeds to roar with great power. But if you think this is impressive, wait until the end, when we arrive at an empty cage. Suddenly, a loud roar can be heard, and the T-Rex can be seen rapidly moving towards the audience. The creature destroys the lights, and they begin to flicker, which adds a big dose of terror to the experience. The T-Rex is a full-body animatronic that stays for a few minutes, terrifying the audience, and then proceeds to leave from where it came from. This exhibition is fantastic, and if you are able to experience it, don't miss that chance. 2018 Jurassic World Explore and Roar Event This time we're going to Universal Studios Singapore again for the Jurassic World Explore and Roar celebration. This limited time event was created to celebrate the opening of the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom movie and was held at the park from June 2nd to August 22nd, 2018. This event had several attractions and experiences, but the main one was Jurassic Park Roar. It began with a presentation of the new Jurassic World at the park. The director of operations, Elizabeth, wanted to present the latest achievements at the park. Miles, the director of security of the park, asked a volunteer from the public to go up and feed the dinosaurs, and it all went perfectly. But then, a lab assistant accidentally activated the emergency shutdown button, and this released many creatures. Among these creatures was the Velociraptor. Thankfully, Miles managed to control the situation and returned the raptor to its cage, but the problems were far from over. The pterodons also escaped and started terrorizing everyone, and even took the lab assistant flying away. They continued making a mess, but after a little while, they flew away. Everything seemed under control, until suddenly, gigantic footsteps and roars started to be heard. Miles and Elizabeth realized that a T-Rex was getting near. The doors opened, and surely enough, a T-Rex appeared. Miles starts distracting the T-Rex while Elizabeth tries to override the system, and after a minute, the situation is controlled. This was such a great show. Another experience that came to the park during this time was the Raptor Training School. During this 20-minute experience, guests met with a Velociraptor and learned the importance of communication, respect, and appreciation to handle a fearsome dinosaur. Wyatt, the resident raptor trainer, taught the experience, and it was a little similar to the raptor encounter, but much more interactive. 2019 Jurassic World – The Ride and Live Tour Let's now go into Universal Studios Hollywood. As we said in the beginning, Jurassic Park The Ride was closed in 2018, to be replaced by a new version. This new attraction is Jurassic World The Ride. The ride was immensely changed with the addition of new scenes and animatronics. In the beginning, we find a new tank where we can find the Mosasaurus. And while this scene is achieved with screens, it is seriously impressive. Another significant change to the ride was the last part. Previously, when the dinosaurs used to escape, the boat would take us to the pump station, where the T-Rex had escaped. But now the new scene shows that the Indominus Rex has escaped and due to its territorial instinct, it has gone directly to the predator area, where the T-Rex can be found. This new scene is filled with animatronic dinosaurs, including Blue. And before the fall, we not only see the T-Rex like we used to see, but it is now accompanied by the Indominus Rex. When the ride first opened in July 2019, it was not completely done, and in this last scene, the Indominus was not a full-body animatronic. But when Universal announced that they would open their doors after the pandemic closure, they said that the ride would be 100% finished by then. And they delivered. Many of the problem scenes were fixed. For example, just outside Predator Cove, we could see some medical kits surrounded by lots of blood and some non-animated pterodons. This scene was changed, where we can find a gyrosphere, of course, and two compies back from the original Jurassic Park ride, but this time fighting over Jurassic World had. Then the second biggest change would be this scene, where there used to be a wall graphic showing info about the T-Rex. Universal replaced that with this new Indominus Rex animatronic that is bursting out of the wall and biting at guests. But the most impressive fix was the ending. Where we used to see the Indominus Rex head, now we can find an all-new, extraordinarily realistic dinosaur who stakes her claim at the ride's finale in a forceful battle with her arch-rival, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Indominus is now a full-size dinosaur. The fully articulated figure spans nearly 55 feet horizontally from head to tail, and over 22 feet vertically, and features lifelike movements like blinking eyes, flexing arms and claws, and clenching jaws as she bares her teeth and lunges at guests. This final battle scene is mind-blowing. 
nothing beats seeing these dinosaurs fight. Also in 2019, the Jurassic World Live Tour opened. This new show introduced a new story starring Jeannie, a Trudon dinosaur, and her trainer, Dr. Kate Walker. Dr. Walker developed a new device that fits Jeannie's head, allowing her to transmit her feelings and communicate this way. Of course, the villains from Einjin are after this device and want to get it, and they try everything to get their hands on it through the show. This live tour is packed with special effects, including pyrotechnics, movable stages, motorcycle stunts, and best of all, animatronics. The animatronics were created by Felp Entertainment, and apart from creating an original script, the team built animatronic suits for the raptors, a fearsome Indominus Rex animatronic head, and walking dinosaurs, like the fantastic T-Rex that we see at the end of the show. The best part is that the tour is currently making its rounds in various cities across the United States, performing shows throughout 2023. 2021, Velocicoaster in Universal Studios Beijing. 2021 started strong with one of the attractions that Theme Park and Jurassic Park fans had been waiting for for a long time. As we said before, a part of the area where Triceratops Encounter had been was used for the new Raptor Encounter in 2015, but there was still some remaining space to be used. And so, Universal filed for demolition site clearing permits for the rest of the area in 2018, so people began speculating that a new attraction might be coming to the area. Then, in early 2019, Construction walls were erected, and some project documents were leaked, which showed the layout of a proposed roller coaster. Construction of the ride began in the spring of 2019, with people still waiting on Universal to announce what would be coming to the area. Finally, in September of 2020, Universal officially announced the name of the ride, Jurassic World Velocicoaster. They also announced that the ride would open in the summer of 2021, and on June 10, 2021, the ride officially opened. This ride is the fastest launch coaster at any Universal theme park. It features two high-speed launches, a thrilling 155-foot fall, and four inversions. And of course, it has Velociraptors. It is such a fantastic ride that really makes us feel the thrill of racing a Velociraptor. An excellent detail is that it ties in with the Raptor Encounter experience. A few months later, Universal's latest park opened. Universal Studios Beijing was announced all the way back in 2014, and it was initially scheduled to be opened in 2019. And the park finally opened in September 2021. Like every other Universal Studios park, it has many different themed zones, and one of these zones is Jurassic World, Isla Nublar. This was the first time that the area was specifically themed around Jurassic World and not Jurassic Park. The area has three attractions, and we'll leave the best for last. The first is Camp Jurassic which, like the rest of the park, is a prehistoric playground. But this time, it is set inside a beautiful aviary. The camp has four unique zones filled with interactive adventures. The next attraction is Jurassic Flyers. This is a steel inverted power coaster where you hop aboard a high-tech glider and soar far above Jurassic World Island Ublar for a pterodon's eye view of the area below. But the best and most impressive attraction inspired by this franchise is the Jurassic World Adventure Ride. In this ride, guests board an atlas for a journey through Isla Nublar, where they encounter many life-sized dinosaurs. This ride uses the same dark ride system as The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man and Transformers the Ride. But instead of using the 3D effects of those rides, it uses a traditional mix of animatronics supported by screen effects. And they seriously took animatronic dinosaurs to a whole new level. Imagine cruising along the vehicle when suddenly, a seemingly harmless-looking Ankylosaurus playfully bumps into your ride, sending it spinning out of control. And that's nothing compared to the rest of the scenes, where you experience an intense showdown between a Tyrannosaurus Rex and an Indominus Rex, which takes place right above you. However, the most groundbreaking scene is where you come face-to-face -face with the gigantic, full-sized, walking Indominus Rex. This incredible animatronic marvel actually chases after you. This massive dino will be hot on your heels as you navigate the ride's track system, creating a heart-pounding reverse chase. It's an encounter unlike anything you've ever experienced before. We can't even begin to fathom what it would be like to have this animatronic chasing us. It is so impressive, but even more terrifying. We'll end our timeline with some attractions that never came to life, but that we need to include because they sound very exciting. 
Jeep Safari. The first attraction that Universal wanted to create inspired by this movie was a recreation of the famous scene where Rexy is chasing the characters. But of course, this would have been impossible then, so the project was shelved. It wasn't until the Jurassic Park land was being planned for Islands of Adventure that Universal wanted to bring back this project in some way. And that's how Jurassic Park Jeep Safari began. This attraction would take guests on tour indoors and outdoors aboard the electric Explorer vehicles. And they would go through the Jurassic Park gate and immediately drive below a giant Brachiosaurus. This outdoor part of the tour would show guests many dinosaurs, until one of them would block their path, forcing the car into the Velociraptor den. Here, the raptors would start climbing onto the vehicle. The car would escape the enclosure, only to come face to face with a T-Rex. The T-Rex would have stepped on the roof and spun it. The ride sounds very cool, but also pretty familiar. And that's why we never got it built. It was just too similar to Jurassic Park the ride. So the project was cancelled again. Helicopter Tours Another iconic attraction planned for Islands of Adventure that was cancelled. And this was a huge surprise because its development went so far that it even made it all the way to concept art and model of the theme park when it was being presented. This ride would have been a tower with a helicopter on its roof, and it would have been a simulator-style flying ride that would take guests on a flying ride around Jurassic Park. Now, this was not your typical closed cabin ride system simulator ride like Back to the Future, but one more similar to Soren, so it would be a suspended ride theater system. Guests would board the helicopters, and their journey would begin. They would go around the entire park, flying over dinosaur paddocks and getting aerial views of mountains. While looking at the beautiful views, guests would suddenly be attacked by pterodons. And while these are very impressive creatures, this would have been terrifying. Helicopter sounds like a fantastic attraction, but it sadly was never built. We know of no official reason, but it would be amazing to have this attraction nowadays. Raptor Racers after Islands of Adventure opened in 1999, there were several more projects being planned for the Jurassic Park-themed area. One of these was Raptor Racers. This ride would have been a wooden roller coaster designed by Coaster Works. In this coaster, guests would have been chased by a bunch of velociraptors, and they would have to escape from their claws. This coaster was partly inspired by the famous Cyclone Coaster in Long Beach, and was going to have a track in the shape of a dinosaur skeleton and the coaster trains would be painted to look like the tour vehicles and Jeep Wranglers from the film. So guests would get into carts and race to outrun the raptors, and towards the end of the ride, they would enter a dark area where the carts would start shaking to simulate danger. After exiting this area, they would notice that the vehicles would have some pretty scary claw marks on their side. This effect was one of the most exciting parts of the ride. The claw marks and damage to the coaster trains would be revealed by shining a UV light on them so the passengers could see just how close they had come to becoming the raptor's next meal. While this ride was never built, it was recycled and became the Velocicoaster. Amber Mine Coaster The Amber Mine Coaster was also developed after Islands of Adventure opened, and it was going to be built where Skull Island Reign of Kong is now. This coaster was going to be a complete circuit roller coaster, with a height measuring at least 200 feet. That's nearly twice as tall as the Incredible Hulk coaster and its theme would be an amber mine facility surrounded by electric fences. There would be several mountains like we see in Big Thunder Mountain, and several theming elements that you could find within Camp Jurassic. This massive roller coaster would climb a chain lift hill and drive down the mountain, swooping around waterfalls. Guests would travel along a track meant for mining purposes in and around the amber mines. The coaster was approved and even designed, but because of the decline in tourism in 2001, the project was cancelled entirely, and no more information was released about this proposed ride. Very sad. Did we miss any attractions? Let us know in the comments! And get your Jurassic Park animatronic dose from these videos! If you like our content, consider becoming a Patreon. We have tons of perks, including being immortalized in the wall we're painting for Walt, our animatronic. Check the link in the pinned comment.